This episode of the Escape Diet Prison podcast is sponsored by the Escape Diet Prison tribe. Do you feel like you need more support? Are you sick and tired of doing it alone, but you feel like you don't have enough money for coaching, for support, for help? Do you feel like you don't have a lot of time, but you really, really want to heal? Are you fed up and know that it's time for some serious change? Then the Escape Diet Prison Tribe is exactly right for you. The Escape Diet Prison Tribe is a community membership on steroids for those of you who are so ready to stop battling food and your body. The Escape Diet Prison Tribe is a place where body positive women hang out to support each other, learn from each other, and finally stop placing their self-worth on what they eat and how much they weigh. Go over to anasophie.us forward slash tribe to get all the details. Hi everyone and welcome back to a brand new episode of the Escape Diet Prison podcast. Before we go into this week's episode, I just wanted to say that Deb and I originally state that this is the very first episode of the year and obviously I have released another episode already. So it's not the very first episode. It just didn't work out schedule wise but i just wanted to to share this little disclaimer before you think we're totally crazy so um this is the second episode of <laughs> this year and we still do wish you a very happy new year enjoy this episode hey everyone and welcome back to the very first episode of escape diet prison in the new year we're in 2019 now, which is totally crazy. My yeah. name is Anna Sophie Reinhardt, and I'm here with Deb. Hello, Deb. Hello, everybody. Happy New Year. Thanks, you too. <laughs> Thank you. And, you know, we're all already five days into this year, which is totally insane. My, uh, my boyfriend, he's um, he's off work and, you know, he's, he had a bunch of vacation days that he had to take. So he was like, you know, I have two and a half weeks of vacation. Yay. It's gonna, you know, it's just gonna be so awesome. <laughs> and then for the last three days, he was like, where did my vacation go? <laughs> yeah. It's never long enough. Never, uh, never, never. Ever. Right. It's just like it, time flies. And I mean, you're back at work already. How are the children yeah. and how's it going there? It's okay. They're they're not too bad. They they're a lot more subdued than they were before Christmas, certainly. So that's a good thing. That's yeah. a very good thing. So before Christmas, it's bad usually. Oh boy. Oh, you can't even. People can't even begin to fathom what the kids are like before Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> you ever want to see insanity in in motion? Go to an elementary school three days before Christmas break. <laughs> it's like. Ah. Oh yeah, they they are they are excited those little dudes. <laughs> and so now you know now that it's back to normal, which is great too. I feel like there's normal. a lot to be said. Yeah. yeah, right. Even though sometimes we're like, ugh, just everyday life, but normal is good for everyone. And um, I'm glad when on Monday everything is back to like real normal because, you know, I mean, daycare, they've had days on and off and on and off. And Johan was totally confused. Like, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, there were a lot of friends at our house and he was at friends houses, which is fun that they do this now. So I get a lot of, well, not a lot, but I do get some, some work done in, in between those daycare free days. Yeah. So we're all going back to uh, our regular lives, but with the new year, um, I've had some clients talk, tell me about the feeling of anxiety because there's so much diet talk obviously out there right now and so many New Year's resolutions that resolve around dieting and so much um, pressure when it comes to following the zone diet or the whole 30 diet or Ugh. doing yeah. the Weight Watchers now or 
being vegan, right? Taking vegetarianism a step further. And now this year we're going to go vegan. And um, there's just so many diets and lifestyle changes and whatever you want to call it out there that it can, you can feel really pressurized and really overwhelmed with needing to be part of that, right? With needing to jump on the bandwagon. And Deb mentioned before we um, hopped on the call, when we just had no idea what we were going to talk about today, <laughs> she was like, let's talk about thought work. And I feel yeah. like this fits perfectly into this pressure of needing to lose weight in this new year and being part of the hype and not being the one who says, you know, no, I'm not going to do that. So do you want to talk a little bit about thought work and, and how you've been using it recently in your own life? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Thought work, yeah. Yes, well, um, during my coaching days back in when I really needed coaching a lot, so many of the things that kept me closer to diet, to, to living in the diet world than certainly now, was basically uncontrollable, not uncontrollable, thoughts that ruled the way that I felt, I guess is a is a good way to put it. It's, it was letting thoughts guide the way that you think about yourself or, and your self-worth and, you know, basically how um, you feel like, you know, your worthiness in the world, that kind of thing. And, and through coaching, I, I really a meditation app that I use too. You know, they, they really work on separating your thoughts and feelings and looking at them in a more maybe logical instead of emotional way. Mm -hmm. Not saying that you shouldn't be emotional or anything because that's just the way many of us are. <laughs> Some of us more so than others, but um, <laughs> yeah. Very cool. So the thought work, it's like being able to identify, you know, a, a thought that is just just running in a loop through your head, you know, and, and so often it can be from, you know, triggered just in a weird, weird way. And you're always thinking about yourself from your own point of view, of course. And so many times reactions of people you feel is your fault or you feel is something that you have done or something that you haven't done. And in reality, this person that is reacting in an unusual way towards you or in a way that you don't, you don't think is good. And it may, may or may not be who you just don't know. And so much of it is filtered through your own lens, which we've, we've said before, but to be able to say, okay, there's that thought. And now, you know, that's just a thought. It doesn't mean it's true. Mm -hmm. And so if you can identify the, the thought and say to yourself, it's not true, even writing down a few words can help you kind of really draw a circle around that thought and maybe step away from it and, and give your mind a little bit of rest. Yeah. Because I, I'm sure it's like this for everybody. Once you get caught in that loop of but what if I did that different? What if I look different? What if I did this? What if this? And maybe they don't like this. And then you, you go through and you identify all these things that maybe they're, they're thinking about you or, or whatever. Yeah. And then you, when you identify that, that vicious circle thing, it gives you a little bit of relief from the, from the anxiety that you're feeling. And you can be more logical about it and know that, in our, you know, in this case, it's like your body has virtually nothing to do with how people think about you really at all. The great thing about thought work and thought inquiry is you can go back to why do I feel pressured to look this way or to go on a diet or why do I want to be part of this zone diet or the whole 30 diet? Why do I even want it? And you can really ask yourself you know, to, to, you can really inquire to get to that core piece, which often is, you know, I want to fit in. Yes, I want to hear the praise. I want to feel better. Obviously, we're always yeah. being told you'll feel better when you lose weight. Yes. Um, I don't want to be shamed. I don't want to be judged. I want to look pretty or whatever. 
worth you put into needing to lose weight. And, and then you can begin to take the layers off and see, do I really believe that? Or is this diet culture telling me this is what you need to believe? Is this part of this whole industry brainwashing all of us into making certain choices? Do I really still believe that weight loss equals health, which we know is not true because weight loss does not work. Lasting weight loss does not work. We really um, can get behind the actual reason for this pressure and for the overwhelm and for wanting to also cut out foods and see the success on the scale and see experience our pants being looser or whatever so that we can you know, when this one person lose, loses weight, say, you know, I've lost weight too. Or so that this one person that gets all the praise can tell, can praise us too or whatever, right? So, um, I mean, there are many, many reasons why we want to be part of this, this weight loss diet di um, culture. And, you know, one of the things that's really important for me, um, and I would say for Deb too, is like, we understand the pressure, right? There is no shaming you for wanting to lose weight because you live in this world and this world is horrendously size biased and there's so much prejudice and so much judging going on when it comes to weight that this innate desire to lose weight to be thin to try again and try again and try more and to to t say all these reasons and to repeat all the reasoning as to why you have to lose weight. We get it. Yeah. There's no shaming. And yet we will also always tell you it does not work. It will not work. Um, it plays against you in the long run, right? It works against you. It will deteriorate your health. It will hurt your self-esteem. It will probably lead to more weight gain in the future. So you will, you will get the, <laughs> the uh, compassion and the understanding, but at the same time, you also need to understand the facts and you need to not deny the science that is out there. So all of that can be done when you take this loop, you know, the thought loop that's going on in your mind and you just ask yourself, why am I thinking this? What is really going on? Let me take a step back. Let me be the observer of my thoughts and let me see what am I actually trying to achieve by losing weight? What am I actually trying to prove by losing weight? Why am I actually feeling this way um, when others go on a diet? Like what, what is triggering me and what is actually going on? And obviously you can use thought work in all areas of your life. You can, when you look in the mirror and you don't feel great <laughs> and yeah. you're just like, you are about to go into a meltdown, thought work it is, right? Yeah, exactly. Do, do, you, do you still do that on a daily basis, Deb? When, when you, like with a mirror work or the thought work when it comes to clothes or do you use the thought work in your classroom or how do you you know use this very handy tool in your daily life um hmm. you know when I look in the mirror I don't do that I don't and you know like going to work and getting dressed and I just wear clothes that I really like and I have some and you know so I don't worry about that generally through the day mm. you know at school <laughs> it's I don't have time to worry about <laughs> Things like yeah. that. Yeah. The, the thing is, is I don't, at school, at work, I don't even think about whether or not somebody is treating me in a certain way because of the way I look. That never, mm -hmm. that is not part of, that's just not true. In my life, it's like, that's just not, that's not true. I don't get, I don't ever have that idea that I'm getting treated differently because of some physical aspect of myself at all so it's yeah. usually when I'm stressed out at home <laughs> like you know later in the evening when things pile up and you're like Ugh. Ugh. yeah yeah exactly and yeah and do you feel like thought work all, all, always works for you or other times when no. you, <laughs> <laughs> what do you yeah. do then 
Well, I guess in in reality, it it does eventually work, but I don't always get immediate relief from the anxiety or Mm -hmm. anything like that. It's not always... It's not always like, oh, is that what it is? Oh, phew, I'm done now. It will lessen it. And then when it builds up again and you can go through the same thing and, you know, repeat and repeat it and repeat it and, and it, it will level down as you, as you go on. But, you know, sometimes it's easy enough to go, oh, that's what that is. And then, and then be done with it. But, but sometimes, you know, some of the things that are, oh, you know, like from your childhood or personal things that happen that are difficult. And, you know, those kinds of things take a while to to work through. Yeah, for sure. And many of us understand this whole concept intellectually, right? But then when it comes to feeling, feeling worthy or or not feeling so fat in quotes, right? When we say we feel fat, not feeling this and that, that's a whole nother level and, and not feeling inferior because of your size or, you know, still believing and, you know, if only I lost weight, I would be, I would like myself more. Feeling that, that, that comes later. But I think one of the first things that we have to stop doing is we have to stop pressuring ourselves into liking our body into loving what we see at all times, right? I feel like with this whole body love and body positivity movement, there is a lot of talk about, and obviously, you know, it's been co-opted by the wellness industry and by the dieting industry and all that, all of these, these words. But oftentimes it feels like if you can feel like a failure if you don't love your body when you try to escape diet prison, right? And when you've been doing this yeah. forever and ever and you've gained weight or you've lost weight or whatever, then your weight stayed the yeah. same, your body's changed. And you're like, I just, I just, I still don't like my body. I still don't love this yes. body. For me, body love is not about loving the way your body looks. Because right. looks change. All the time. All the time, exactly. Our bodies are not static. Our lives are not static. We are changing all day, every day. And so if you hold on to a certain image and you need to love that image and then it changes, you probably will always lose. But if you go and respect your body, learn to respect your body, learn to let your body be (laughs) um, and live your life, then you're going to have such... That is, I feel like, where you will stop hating your body. That is when you stop, you know, having all these obsessive thoughts because your body will be your body. Yeah, basic. Um, what I was thinking is, is when you were saying about the, the box thing and the movement has been co-opted. And I think, uh, I think that it's that idea that, that where it started loving your body, where it started was a very complex thing. And it talked about, and it, it was referring to the work you had to do to go th- to go through before um, before you were able to accept how you were and then just not think about how your body is in relation to how everybody thinks about you or how you think about yourself. And it's a very complex process. And like always, when somebody tries to explain the idea behind it, it gets simplified and simplified. And I think it was use the body love was used in a more holistic way instead of just loving the way you look like you were mm-hmm. saying looks are looks change all the time and so i think that it has been simplified so much that popular culture has picked it up and then of course everybody then they find when it's simplified like that and it's especially geared to what to women and we all know that many of the things that women tend to like for whatever reason are frequently made fun of by others. And they, that can be men, it can be other women, it can, you know, there's lots of, lots of parts to that demeaning of women in general, you know, um, devaluing the softer side of things and trying to make the more masculine traits uh, important. Mm-hmm. So anyway, I, that's what I I always think of. It's like it's just been oversimplified 
also. And culture has made it mean something that it really doesn't, wasn't intended to mean at all, kind of. But because it is complex and, you know, for all of us, this journey is completely different for every single one of us, even though there's so many things we have in common, right? And so many thoughts we have in common and so many reactions we have in common and so many fears and all of that. But still this journey to freedom and uh, liberating yourself from, from diet prison is different for every single one because we're all in different situations, have different family situations, different work situations, different pasts. You know, it's such a complex thing. And, you know, we're not all all healthy or able. We're not all um, straight and we're not white and we're not all white. You know, all of these things, they play into all in this, in this big picture of, diversity obviously and we also need to allow every single one of us to own their body in whatever shape and form they want to own and yet we have to encourage everyone to not abuse themselves right and to get to this place of saying I am worthy of eating what I want when I want without fear shame and guilt and I am worthy of allowing my body to be what she needs to be without feeling like I'm being judged every day, all day by culture, by others, by, you know, by workplace culture, by whatever. So we need to uh, become really aware of the fact that, yeah, all of us can decide what to do with our bodies. That is part of the whole movement, right? Loving your body means you get to do what what you want to do with your body. Um, And yet we need to get away from this very abusive way of culture um, defining body love, right? As right. thin, white, young, young, yeah, long hair, whatever, right? Um, yeah. All yeah. of that. So it's 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 a complex situation, and and like one thing that is really important to me is when you feel like you know I shouldn't be having this feeling still, or I shouldn't be worried about this still, or I shouldn't want to lose weight still, or I shouldn't want to change my body still. You live in this world, so part of you might always be triggered in some shape and form, and culture changes changes very slowly. So, you know, maybe 20 years down down the road, you feel super respectful of your body and you you feel free of diet prison but then you see something or read something and there's a part of you that still thinks you know oh if I looked like that everything would be easier and that is okay you you can then go into thought inquiry or you can go and be really compassionate with yourself or you can laugh about it or whatever knowing that this is just part of having lived in diet culture forever and ever and ever. And I feel like the more we understand this, the more we can, the kinder we can be to ourselves and the more we can actually allow ourselves to have all feelings and to not feel like we're failing when we have these feelings, right? And this is very nuanced because you can also use these triggers as a way to say, ha, it doesn't work for me anyway. You know, like this whole escaping diet prison or leaving diet culture behind. Not for me. They can do it, but I'm just too, too deep in all of this that I, you know, I'm just going to have to spend the rest of my life fighting my body. Um, yeah, I think people are just so um, the the idea that thinner is is the ideal has been so ingrained that they can't. It's almost impossible for some people to accept the fact that thinner is not necessarily better or Mm. not not better it's just it's just another way of being and you shouldn't be changing yourself away from your natural way of being no yeah and and whenever you think you know oh look at her lucky her she's so thin challenge that challenge all of what are you saying in those few words or what are you really thinking where does this come from and what does this mean lucky her she's so thin like this statement can only exist in 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 a culture where thin is best and that has been made up 
by the diet industry, by the wellness industry, by, you know, this whole, yeah. by the, by the fashion industry, like that is just a made up concept that bears no meaning in reality. It is just something that, that we've been told over and over and over again. But really, like at the core of it, there's nothing behind that. It is just a statement. And so we, we have to become aware of that um, in ourselves whenever we make these judgments to, because we're making these judgments to, judgments to say that, well, I'm bad right? I don't look like her. She's got it easy or lucky her. And oh, I should look like her. And I'm such a failure. I'm, you know, we, uh, willpower weakling and whatever and whatever and whatever. But if you don't have that thought, she's so lucky she's thin. Then you don't have to feel bad. And you are not bad because you don't, you're not thin. So, you know, it's, it's just like whenever we can take this, these lies away, we're creating a lot of space and a lot of room for more complexity and more diversity and obviously more healing um, and respect for everybody, whatever that body it may look like. And, you know, obviously they all look so very different. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank God they do. Thank God. Yeah. They do. When you think about thin privilege and, it, it exists, obviously, and maybe we can talk about this more in another episode, but don't allow that thin privilege to, to get to you so much that, you know, you think body love or body acceptance, body whatever you want to call it, is not going to happen for you and is not possible for you. Yeah, don't let the, th the idea of thin privilege devalue your life. Yes. You know, don't let the idea that somebody else has it better make your life worse because, that's so true. you know, that's, that's not how it works. No. <laughs> that's not how it really works at all. Um, somebody else's experience doesn't make your experience better or worse mm -hmm. because that goes on in their person, you know, on their little life and what happens to you happens. And it's like all parallel. It, and separate, even though you interact, it's like your uh, your experience in life is is not made better or worse by somebody else, um, by somebody else's experience, and and you don't know, you don't know yeah. what the what other people who look like um, like you think that this is the way a person should look to have the very best life. That is, you know, how they look has very little to do with how they experience their life for the most part. And, and we know that, you know, thin women struggle with their body image too. Yeah. And really thin women struggle with their body image too. So um, body image struggles are not dependent on your size. Nobody's immune from them. Nobody's immune from them. Unfortunately, nobody yeah. is. And so, you know, we always have to re remember that. And yes, of course, there is thin privilege. I'm not going to deny it, but um, just because it exists doesn't mean that thin women feel it. Like they, they may know about it, but they may not feel. Like, you know, when you struggle with anorexia or whatever, you're never thin enough. You're never thin enough right. no matter what. There's always too much and always flaws and where other people look at them and feel, you know, you look, awfully thin they may say no there's still too much so yeah you know there's nuances to all of this yeah um obviously <laughs> yeah. yeah that that if that too much thing is also something ingrained in females from mm. the time they're from the time they're little you know in all shapes and forms you're too loud yeah. you're too much you're too big you're too you're too happy you're too uh-huh you're, yeah, you're too loud. You you laugh too much. You laugh too loud. Quiet yes. down or whatever. It's always you're always too much. Yep, too much, too much, too much. Yeah, uh, I've heard that so often. Yeah, and me I, too. I and I that. still do. I still do. You laugh. Too, your laugh is too loud. And I'm like, I'm sorry. I, it's just no. I'm not sorry. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> spreading my joy onto yes. you. Let me brush it for a while. Oh, it's just the way I laugh. So. Yeah, 
Let me let me let me be pissed off for for a while. Oh. Yeah, really. That's so much more pleasant. No, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's true. Like we're you know we need we we always feel like we need to shrink to fit in. We need to shrink to be good. We need to shrink to be acceptable. When that is not true. Um, shrinking as a concept, ugh, it makes me shudder. It's like, why? Um, but you know, that's a word diet, diet culture uses. Yep. Shrink, shrink, shrink. Um, and that's a word that women, well, not related to bodies, you know, but just women in general, um, we, ne we needed to shrink at all times, in all ways, not be seen, not be heard, just do our, our job and behave. Basically. Yes. So we're Indeed. just, yeah, letting all of that go. Maybe that might be a good thing for the new year. Uh, let go of the need to shrink for others. And yes, and, and we're not just talking about bodies either. No, exactly. We're not. Stand up for yourself and take up your space. Take up your space in whatever shape and form. Yep. Be and her. if your the room. Mm hmm. Too bad, unless mm -hmm. there's a sleeping baby nearby. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't matter. It does not matter. You're right. All right, and, and you know, with that, we're gonna wish you a wonderful 2019. We're gonna. We're excited about all the stuff we're gonna talk about in this year and what's gonna happen to this podcast. And we'll be talking to you. We'll be in your ear again next week so thank you everyone for listening and we'll talk to you again next week bye everyone bye bye thank you for listening to the escape diet prison podcast you've reached the end of another episode connect with us over at anasophie.us or in the escape diet prison facebook group don't forget to get your free gift, How to Stop Overeating and Feel Confident and Sexy as Hell. Get the five secrets to overcoming overeating now. Just go over to anasophie.us forward slash how hyphen to hyphen overcome hyphen overeating. See you at the next episode.